Spirit of the Lord is with Mary's freedom. Every chain is broken through you, Jesus. We're the Spirit of the Lord is with Mary's freedom. Let me hear you. Whoa.
Father, we just thank you for your love, your incredible love for each and every one of us, Father. We deserve, you deserve our highest praise today. Thank you for the opportunity to worship you. So we sang about freedom, now we're going to sing about a happy day. And I need you guys to express that, okay? Yes. All right. Yes, let's go.
am yours, Jesus, you are mine. Joy the perfect peace. Earthly fate finally will see. Celebrate Jesus is alive. He's alive. And oh, happy day, happy day. You wash my sins away. Oh, happy day, happy day. I'll never be the same. Oh, happy day. Wash my sins away. Oh, happy day, happy day. I'll never be the same. Forever I am changed. What a glorious day! And oh, what a glorious day!
we sang that song, I kept thinking, I just started to become very grateful about the house that we're in. How we're taught the living word in such an applicable way that we can walk out of here and start applying it the very day that you heard about the message. And um, if you look at the song list, we've got freedom, happy day, I am loved, and one of the teachings that, that really has changed the way that I looked at my Christianity is, um, and it was taught here, I think it was my bishop or pastor at the time. He talked about how grace and forgiveness and salvation is just a gift that you have to receive. Yes. You don't have to earn it. There's not a price for it. You just have to accept it like you would a gift. And another Christian belief is something that Apostle Jeff said a long time ago. He said, if if God knows the beginning from the end and everything in between, what can you possibly do to disappoint him? You can't throw him a curveball or a surprise or something that he doesn't already know about that you're going to mess up on. So then how can there be disappointment? And we keep trying to wrap our heads around that in our, with our Christian, with our human ways like with our kids right but we don't know everything that they're going to do how much do we already love them so how much more I mean the grace is and as Tim sang that song and he talked about there's nothing that I can do the forgiveness is there and I think a lot of us forget that in our day to day we get so wrapped up in the grind of our daily lives that we know the word, we've heard the word, but we haven't let it marinate in what we do day to day. And I think the Lord is trying to remind us of that this morning. Before you spoke a word, you singing over me. You have been so, so good. When I felt 
the word you paid it off for me
Redeeming Love family. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you. <laughs> oh, good to know one. Someone loves me. Um, praise God. Hallelujah. Welcome, Redeeming Love family. Love you. I call you blessed. Whether you're here or on the internet, um, welcome. Praise God, because we're all in his presence. Thank God that there's no distance in the Holy Spirit. Amen. God planned that. He knew things were coming. And praise God, he sent us his gift, the Holy Spirit, to keep us connected, to keep us together, and um, carry us through these times of trials and tribulations. So what do we do when we're in the presence of the Holy Spirit? Everything. This is where we get our answers. This is where we receive our healing, salvation, um, direction of what God's called us to do. Um, this morning I was just um, meditating on the whole book of Hebrews. And actually I was waking up and I just turned on the audio version of the Bible here and was just listening to it. But. Um, my intentions were there. But it says here in um, Hebrews 1, verse 2, But in these last days he has spoken to us by his Son, whom he appointed heir of all things, and through him also he made the universe. The Son is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. After he had provided purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. So right now it doesn't feel like that we're in control and that God's in control. Sometimes it just doesn't feel like that, that um, God's really working in our favor. But from the foundations of this earth, he planned us out. He sent his son so that we could be sin free. He knew we were going to screw up. He knew we were going to break things. But yet... He sent his son and he did it. And look at he, Jesus, basically, that was his full job, was just purify our sins so we can be in right standing with our Heavenly Father. So today, as we uh, continue in worship by listening to the Word of God, let's just remember that what God has done by sending his son, Jesus. And we have all the answers. We have everything we need in our Savior. Amen? Well... Let's also uh, wish Nikki a happy birthday. Praise God. 22. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay, please pay attention to the announcements. They're going to um, show us what to do with our offering and what's coming up. Love you all. 
Good morning, I am Destiny Inglehart, and on behalf of Redeeming Love Christian Embassy, we welcome and thank you for spending part of your weekend here with us. If you are new or just tuning in, it is great to have you. You can text rlce.welcome to the number 57838 to get our online connection card. Now here are some announcements to help us all stay connected. This Christmas, could you help us supply white socks and postage stamps for inmates at the Bay County Jail? A small gesture can go a long way this Christmas season as we share the love of Jesus with those incarcerated. The Embassy will be participating in our annual Christmas Angel Project to help families in our immediate community. From toys for children to gas cards for single parents, let each of us be thankful for the provision God has given us. And pick up an angel today at the hospitality desk. Thank you in advance for your generosity. RLCE welcomes our guest speaker, Bishop Jamie Inglehart, on Sunday, December 27th, along with Brittany Rocha, who will be leading our morning worship service with the Embassy Praise Band at 10 a.m. here at the beautiful State Theater in downtown Bay City. Remember to invite a friend, and for those attending in person, bring a mask for others' safety. We have raised $711,200 towards our next goal of $720,000. Place your gift in the envelope, mark building on it, and mail it to the 3012 East Midland Road, Bay City, Michigan, 48706, or text RLCE to the number 73256. You can renew your pledge, make a new pledge, or help us with fundraisers. Make sure to like us on Facebook and tell your friends to watch our online service each Sunday morning at 10 a.m. on our YouTube channel and say hello to others attending. Also, whether you attend the theater or online, take a moment and send a short video from your phone saying hello to your RLCE family and friends. And remember to insert each of your names and send it to redeeminglovechristianembassy at gmail.com. We look forward to seeing you. The Embassy would like to welcome back Pastor Randy and Cindy Weibel from Roger City. Some of you may remember that they were part of our pastoral team overseeing our children's ministry before accepting the lead pastor position in Roger City over 20 years ago. We are also pleased to welcome back the Zerny family from North Carolina. We're glad that you are home. And yes, Nelson Salgado, we're glad you're here too. Thank you for your continued financial support to RLCE. Your partnership allows us to be agents of change both here as well as around the world by supporting our vibrant ministries, outreaches, and worldwide missions programs and orphanages. Giving has never been easier. You can securely give from your mobile device by texting RLCE to the number 73256. Offering baskets are also on each side of the stage as well as in the foyer for those giving their tithes and offerings in person. Feel free to place your offering envelopes at any one of these locations during our greeting time. At this time, children are dismissed to go next door to our secure United Way Family Center. Nursery is open for children ages 3 and under on the mezzanine. In order to keep everyone safe, we will not give hugs or handshakes, but rather we will take a moment to greet one another with an elbow bump or a friendly wave. Those desiring to give your tithes and offerings may do so at this time, with containers located to the left and to the right of the stage. Our next announcements will resume shortly. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. Songs and blue, white feet. 
to the people everywhere we see. Door to you and me. Door to the world. All the boys and girls. Door to the people everywhere we see. Door to you and me. Door to the world. All the boys and girls. Door to the people everywhere we see. Joy to the people everywhere we see, joy to you and me. And now please welcome Apostle Jeff Englehart as he comes to minister. Good morning. Really good to see you today. And uh, we've been talking about uh, Prayer Lives Matter. And uh, we're going to just conclude this year with Prayer Lives Matter. Because I don't know about you, but uh, there's a whole lot of prayer that needs to happen. Isn't that right? And uh, so anyhow, our theme scripture, of course, has been found in Matthew chapter 7, verses 7 through 8. It says, ask, you should know this by now, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door shall be opened unto you. And then it goes on to say, for everyone who asks, receives. Everyone who asks, receives. Um, I think some of the things that we've been talking about over the, over the last uh, few weeks, we've been talking specifically about the Lord's Prayer. And a couple of those things we've been found, found out in the Matthew chapter 6, 9 to 13, the disciples were asking God, well, they were asking Jesus, hey, how do we, they weren't asking him about how to perform miracles. They weren't saying, how do we raise the dead? Instead, they said, Lord, would you teach us how to pray? And he said in Matthew chapter 6, 9 to 13, he says this, this is in how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we have forgiven those who have, who have our debtors. And lead us not unto temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. You see, the Lord's Prayer is a prayer to be prayed rather than outline. It's not just a prayer, a prayer to be prayed. It's, it's an outline on how to pray. And that's what we've been talking about for the last five weeks. And so today, um, just for a quick review, we learned, first of all, number one, seek God's presence with worshipful heart. That's when we say, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Always approach the Father with a worshipful heart. Number two, we, we learned that seek God's will over your own will. That's where we say, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Also, number three, we, uh, we learn to seek God's daily provision. God's daily provision is we're seeking his provision. It says, give us today our daily bread, both in the natural and in the spiritual. Huh? Because man can't live by bread alone. And then we also talked about uh, number four, seek God's pardon for offenses. There's offenses. There's things that happen in our lives. And it says, forgive us our debts as we also forgive our debtors. And then we also learned last week, we learned uh, seek God's power to overcome temptation. Seek God's power to overcome temptation. But it said, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The five t petitions that we, that we learned, they are direct toward God, and we do it confidently. Why do, why do we pray confidently when we're talking to God, when we're addressing God? It's because for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. This concluding postscript gives us the rationale for being bold for what we ask for. Why can we be bold? It's because we serve a big God. That's why we can ask for big things because God is a great big God. Amen? And so we need to be bold in our prayers when we say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. I also think just how... Uh, just how big God is. Think about it for just a moment. The conclusion of the Lord's Prayer tells us in four words how great he is. Yours is the kingdom. Yours is the power. Yours is the glory forever. Forever. It's never ending. Those words, just they don't just sound big. They are big. They sound grand, and that's because they are grand. Though this Christmas season and through the Christmas season that we're, that we're heading into, we're going to see how those words intertwine with the greatest gift of Christmas. Let's look at each of them over the next couple of weeks. Thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. It's called a doxology. Doxology. If it's the definition of doxology, it's an expression of praise to God. 
It's, you know what, it's, it's whenever you pray and you thank God for something and you, you approach his throne and you say, God, I thank you for who you are. But when you're done praying, God, I thank you that you heard my prayer. I thank you that you are awesome. I thank you that you are able to do that which I've asked you to do. You know, you're saying, God, you are worthy of my praise. So when you're concluding your prayers, don't just leave it as, in Jesus' name, amen. No, instead, give him a little praise and thanksgiving for what you just asked for, knowing that he's a good, good father, just like they sang this morning, who is there to reach out to. He's there to minister to us. He's there to give us good gifts. The word actually says he's there to give us good gifts. Even more so, how can our heavenly father give good gifts if an earthly father knows how to give good gifts? God gives better gifts. For thine is the kingdom and the glory and the power and the glory forever. It's what it's called. Every Christian should have the attitude of gratitude when they pray. Isn't that right? Have, have you ever been around those people that just want to murmur and complain all the time? Huh? You know what I'm talking about up there. They just want to murmur and complain. They don't want to give God any credit. They want to give God any praise. They don't want to look at the positive things in life. Matter of fact, they're focused on the negative things in life. And you know what? There's just something about an attitude of gratitude. And that this prayer ends that way. It ends with an attitude of of gratitude. Have you ever noticed, um, I, like, I like what Psalms 22 verse 3 says, that God inhabits the praises of his people. If you're ever wondering in your life, hey, you know what, I just need the presence of God right now, then just begin to worship him, begin to praise him. I'm telling you what, in every situation of life, no matter where you find yourself at, even today, in whatever situation you're in, even now, you can begin to praise the Lord, and all of a sudden you begin to feel his presence. It's just like as we were worshiping this morning, all of a sudden you begin to sense his, his, his incredible presence in your life. You have that every day of the life. Every day of your life, turn on the radio when you're feeling depressed and begin to praise the Lord, huh? Begin to thank him and praise him for all that he's doing and all that he's yet to do in your life. Thine is the kingdom. What is it significant? It declares that God is sovereign. It means that he holds the complete power. He's over and he's above all this in the world. He is in charge of every aspect of creation from the rising of the sun to its setting, to its going down. The direction of the wind and the force of the wind. He, he controls the rise and the fall of kingdoms and those who govern them. And he, the list continues on and on and on. God is great. His vastness is wonderful. And Neb I, I think of a person, even in the Bible, that talks about King Nebuchadnezzar. King Nebuchadnezzar uh, was the king of Babylon. And he discovered this, and he discovered how great God was. You see... King Nebuchadnezzar was full of pride. He was one of those men that was full of pride. He wanted people to worship him. He, he, uh, he was very boastful. And all of a sudden, for seven years of his life, God actually struck him down, and he acted like an animal and ate grass for seven years. In God's mercy, he restored him back to his health and back to who he was. And, when, and upon his restoration, he said this. He said, and I blessed the Most High, and I praised and honored him that lives forever, whose dominion is an everlasting dominion, and his kingdom is from generation to generation, and all the inhabitants and the earth are re reputed as nothing, and, and doth according to his will the armies of heaven, and among the inhabitants of the earth, and none can stay, and none can stay his hand or say unto him what to do, only he is worthy. Things around you, at times, they might seem spiraling out of control. Things around you might feel like they're bleak or they're gray or they're dark or whatever. There are situations, there are storms that we get to in life. Some storms, let's face it, some storms are our fault, right? There are some storms that you're going to be in in life, they're other people's fault, there's going to be storms in your life that were created storms. There's going to be other storms that, you know what, you got in the midst of it and you didn't know it was coming and it wants to blindside you. But in the midst of that, keep your focus on who Jesus Christ is. Keep your focus on God, knowing that his is the kingdom. His is the kingdom. Did you know that um, in this prayer, when this prayer was taught, I think of what was happening in the scope of things. There was Caesar in Rome, literally ruled, was ruling the world. 
Matter of fact, the Roman Empire stretched from the British Isles all the way across the Mediterranean and as far away as India. Think about that. This was a time when Caesar was ruling the world and all of his royalty, his rings, his robes, and this was a man who was snapping his fingers and at the snap of his fingers, he could tell and he could take a person's life or he could change their life for the good or the bad. The signing of his name could literally change the course of history. And at this time, he was reigning in a little town. He was reigning. And at this time, he was also reigning at the same time another king was being born in Bethlehem in a manger, which was Jesus Christ. Those two kingdoms were paralleling at the same time on the earth. Caesars and Christ, the palace and the stable. One day they came into open conflict, but the stable emerged victoriously. There's something about a lamb being born in a manger. So these early Christians, not looking to Caesar, but looking to God, prayed, Thine, O Lord, is the kingdom. They had to remind themselves that no matter how vast the Roman Empire was, no matter how dark the days that they were living in, no matter how dark the days were that, that, even, that even men and believers, Christian believers were being fed to lions, they, even those things, the dark things that were happening, they had to remind themselves, God, thine is the kingdom. Thine is the power. Thine is the glory forever and ever. I think... I would say this, don't let... Lost, the lost, cynical world that you're living in, that I live in, don't let it dominate nor determine or tell you that God is out of business. I'm here to say that God is still in charge. He is still running the show. God is still on the throne, for thine is the kingdom. Not only is God is sovereign, he holds complete power, complete power. He also determines the course and the outcome of events. Matter of fact, I'm reminded of a scripture in Proverbs chapter 16, verse 33. It says this, you may throw the dice, but it's every decision is from the Lord. Meaning this, that we may throw the dice, but the Lord determines how it's going to fall. The Lord determines how it's going to fall. That's found in, in Proverbs 16, 33. You see... When we, when we affirm that God is in charge of all things, we're saying whatever he wishes, whatever he determines, the outcome of things will be before it comes to pass. And there's the thing. Listen to this. He has every right to do it and do it all. Matthew chapter 28, uh, 28 verse 18 says this. All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Whose is it? It's his. It's Jesus' authority. During the Christmas season, we also think of, the, of Isaiah the prophet who prophesied 700 years prior to Christ's literal birth. And in Isaiah chapter 9, 6, it says, Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Government here speaks of, of the government. It's actually speaking about the ruling authority that's going to be placed on Jesus. So guess what? Jesus has that authority. So when we pray, know that you're speaking to your father who is a king. He's also his son is the one who paid the ultimate price for you and for me. And when he died and rose again, took part in creating the universe as the very son of God, your advocate, the father, you are acknowledging that God has the authority to exercise sovereignty over all things. And you're saying, thine is the kingdom. What does the kingdom look like? I would say the kingdom of God to the world around us is like a gift. You see... God sent Jesus, the greatest gift, into our lives for all the world. And when we receive that gift into our life, it all de determines on our part how we, are, how we are showing that gift to the world. How do we wrap that gift to the world? Or better yet, how do we unwrap 
that gift of who he is on the inside of us to the world? How do we unwrap Jesus to the world around us? You see, the kingdom of God, it's, it's, not, it's not just a literal kingdom, but it's also a kingdom that's within us. The Bible says that the kingdom of God is within us. And if the kingdom of God is within us, that means that we have, we have all the access to everything that the king has to offer in the kingdom. We have it. But we have to remind ourselves from the word and through our praying, because prayer lives, they do matter. The more that you pray, the greater his kingdom becomes in your life. The more power that you have of, of his kingdom in your life, the more you're getting prepared, ready to rule and to reign with him someday in his kingdom. So how are you unpackaging, unwrapping Jesus to the world that lives on the inside of you. I would say that the climatic doxology begins in the passionate declaration of God's sovereignty. When we were as believers and we were praying, Jesus said he should conclude affirming, yours, for yours is the kingdom. The robust pronouncement asserts that God both possesses and presides over his vast kingdom. He is the sovereign king who exercises supreme authority and unrestricted dominion over an immense empire. Certainly this reign includes both the realm of providence and the sphere of salvation. He commands all the affairs of mankind and even interacts in the inner workings of the entire universe. From his throne above, God works all things according to the counsel of his will, according to Ephesians chapter 1, verse 11. That's why when you're saying in the Lord's Prayer, Father God, as it is in earth, as it is in heaven, let it be today on earth as it is in heaven. When you're saying those words, when you're, when you're reminding yourself those words, you are saying, God, I want to line up with your will that you've already predestined, you've preplanned, you've prepositioned. Situations in life, yes, they will be chaotic from time to time. Yes, we're also going to have great times in life. How many know that? I, I believe that even in the most chaotic times of life, and even, even in the moments where you have the, sometimes the greatest lack, can also be the times of greatest joy. And you're like, you're nuts. I'm saying to you, it's your perspective on life. What are you learning from that moment? And once again, that life lesson becomes a gift to you becomes a gift to you and it's how you spin it it's how you turn it it's how you allow God to work all things together for your good and for his kingdom's sake I would say that the situations may look chaotic from time to time but these days the kingdom of this world the Bible says the kingdom of this world has become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ and he shall reign forever and ever that's found in Revelation chapter eleven fifteen. Did you know what that that word that's, that word there means? And of His Christ. Do you realize that? And of His Christ, that word right there means His anointed ones. Why don't you Why don't you just turn to somebody right sitting next to you and say, "Hey, anointed one," because you are of His Christ. You are His anointed one. You are the one that will rule and reign with him in the future. But now just think about this for just a moment. It also is the, it's also the literally gift of God gave us Jesus. And Jesus gave us the keys to the kingdom according to Matthew 16, 19. The keys of the kingdom don't have to be given to us when we die someday. The keys of the kingdom are given to us right now. You and I have access to the keys of the kingdom right now. The keys of the kingdom unlock things. They unlock favor. When you're, when you're, when you're about to just blow up to, on on somebody now trust me I've been tested in this numerous times over the last two months that my mom has been in this rehabilitation center there have been things that have happened that my blood pressure has risen and it has rose and I'm telling you what I get on that phone and I'm just about to and all of a sudden I'm reminded the Holy Spirit whispers in my ear now Jeff how are you going to unpack me now I got to admit I got to admit there was one time I unpacked something else, and it wasn't God. I think, that's just our, I think that's just our human nature. 
I asked, I, asked, I asked the lady, I said, would you forgive me? I said, this isn't your fault. Would you forgive me? I said, we are just truly frustrated over the situation of my mom being dropped on her, on her knees and then, and then her foot being broken, I mean, her ankle being broken. I'm like, come on. And you know, it was at that moment that all of a sudden I realized right there, you just showed a portion of the kingdom. Being gracious to other people, showing, showing grace to other people that need grace, that need favor. That's showing God's kingdom. That, that's exerting God's kingdom here on the earth. I'm also, I'm also thinking about Romans chapter 8, 16 that says, you are a joint heir with Christ. You're a joint heir with Christ. So every time I pray, I, re- I realize that I'm praying as a joint heir with Jesus Christ. And when I pray to the Father, and I'm praying expectantly, and I'm coming boldly before the throne of grace, I can do so because of my elder brother, which is Jesus Christ, who's also my Savior. That's what the Bible says. A friend that sticks closer than a brother. One that saves, one that redeems. And lastly, I think of 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. You are a holy priesthood. That you should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. You see, the keys of the kingdom, part of the kingdom is the gift that God gave us, which is Jesus Christ. The gift that each one of us have in our life to make good decisions every day. He gives us his word that helps us from day to day to apply life and life application in our life every day. The question this morning is, how are you unwrapping the kingdom of God to the world around you? How are you unwrapping the gift, who Jesus is in your life, to the world that's around you? The band is making their way back to the stage this morning. And I want you just to ponder that thought for just a moment. How do I unwrap Jesus Christ that's living on the inside of my life How do I unwrap him to a world that's around me every day? It's done in the way that you show favor. The favor that God has on your life, it's the way that you show favor to other people. It's the way that you're kind to other people. It's the way that you show love to other people. It's the way that you show preference. It's the way that you open the door for somebody else at a store when they don't have an electronic door to open. It's, it's being considerate. It's being patient. It's being kind. That's the way we unwrap who Jesus is in our lives. But know this, that when you're praying in your prayer time, know that you're praying to the, to the God that is in charge of the entire universe. The entire kingdom is his. And all other kingdoms someday will bow to his ultimate authority. Amen? So that's who you're praying to. Your prayer lives, they matter. Your prayer lives today are praying things into the future because your prayer lives are framing your world tomorrow. The things you pray today are the things you'll walk into tomorrow. What kind of things are you praying? Are, there, are they murmuring? Are they complaining? Or are they saying, Lord, I thank you for, and all of a sudden you list all the things you're thankful for. Are you saying, God, I thank you that you are a good father. I thank you that no good thing will you withhold to them that walk uprightly. And because of that, I boldly ask for this. And you ask him. And you can expect to receive because he loves you that great. He loves you that much. Matter of fact, you've heard me say it before. When you're praying, ask the Lord, God, can I get this now? Even in all your purchases, God, can I get this now? Many times you'll hear yes, no, or sometimes you'll hear wait. I'm okay with yes. <laughs> sometimes it's the, it's, the, it's the wait that gets me. You know what I'm saying? But I know if I hear him say wait, it just means that he's going to give it to me in a different way or, or he's going to take that desire and give me something better. Isn't that right? We serve a good God. He is a good, good Father. Would you stand with me this morning? (laughs) 
our prayer our prayer response team members are coming this morning. They're gonna they're here to agree with you and to pray with you, and our elders are here to agree with you and pray with you as well. If you have a need in your life, they're here to pray with you. For those that are tuning in today, and maybe you've never, or even those that might be here and you've never accepted Christ in your life, my friend, He is the greatest gift that you'll ever receive in your life. He's the greatest gift to invite in your life on your journey of life. And he's always for you. He's not against you. So this holiday season, make sure that you're making Christ the center focus of your entire holiday season, knowing that he is the kingdom. He is the kingdom. It belongs to him. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your blessing on our lives today. I thank you that as we we pray and we thank you for, but that when we pray that we know that we have an advocate with the Father, that when we pray we know that yours is the kingdom. You own the kingdom. So that there are things that we ask for, we receive because you own those things. Lord, today, help us to ask and desire those things that you desire in your life. And Lord, we thank you for that. Thank you for blessing us on our coming in and blessing us on our going out. In our lying down and our rising up, Lord, we just want to honor you and your kingdom in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, amen, amen. Remember this, my friends, you are you are loved, you're accepted, you belong, and God has a purpose for your life. Amen? Make sure to unpack Jesus this week to the world around you. Amen? Amen. God bless you.